Hey, Giant Builders. So our next guest has so much experience to share at such a young age. She has been through so many different life building situations. And so I'd love for you to share and listen to her as she gives us wisdom on building a business. Building spirituality, family, health, and business. This is The Giant Builders with Lois Wyant. Hey, Giant Builders. So I just want to let you know ahead of time that today's guest also has a book. And if you listen to the end, you will find out how you could possibly win a book. And also, the conversation reminded me of a couple of previous podcast guests. And so I'm going to put those links below. So I hope you'll watch those too. Hey, Giant Builders. Thank you for joining us. Today's guest is Dee Dee Kai. Hi, Dee Dee. How are you? I am great. Thank you so much, Lois, for having me. I'm so delighted and honored to be here today. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yes, absolutely. Well, personally, first and foremost, I'm a proud mom of two. I have a seven-year-old girl turning eight next month and a four-year-old boy. Uh, we, uh, two and a half years ago, transferred uh, and uh, moved to Sarasota, Florida, which is where we reside now. And um, yes, I run a company uh, as a CEO and founder called Fit to Profit. And um, our values and intention and mission is to really teach every single woman entrepreneur to build wealth from the inside out. Um, when we talk about fit, uh, we holistically refer to being physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually fit um, to be profitable, uh, whatever that looks like, right, for, for us entrepreneurs. And um, how I found it fits a profit honestly has been a personal journey of mine. Um, I started out with uh, me trying to figure out what I really wanted to do because after six months being in a corporate job, um, following the path that were set out for me of being first generation immigrant, uh, that I had to do great in school um, and then eventually land a job and I should be happy. And uh, that didn't pan out for me, that traditional way of uh, running life. And that's okay. I'm not saying that this is for everyone, but this just has been my personal journey. It's how it started. And uh, yeah, being super lost from, oh my gosh, I've done all everything to get here and uh, I am not where I'm supposed to be. What am I supposed to be doing, right? And uh, at the same time, I have the opportunity um, to start a brick and mortar business um, with my mom as a business partner. So yes, in 20, was it uh, 20, oh my gosh, 20. 2007 was when I started, um, you know, the business with my mom. And I realized, yes, this could be the American dream. Um, we went in with all of our life savings, started a restaurant business. It was always her dream to, she's a phenomenal chef. So she was a head chef. I was running everything from, you name it. We built a restaurant from scratch. Um, and I completely got burnt out. Um, it turned out to be an American nightmare pretty fast. I was <laughs> three and a half years in working 18 hour days um, and was doing everything, you name it. I wore all of the hats and I mean, you name it from, you know, greeting the customer and all of the things. I really enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I've learned everything I needed to learn about hard work, which I was already wired to do, right? Like I, I knew and understood hard work, but not to that level until and actually, you know, having gone through that experience, I got burnt out. Um, and then tragedy happened. Uh, the week of my uh, wedding, I lost my best friend to suicide. And um, honestly, it's, it's truly is a, a blessing in disguise. Not that she had to, you know, go that way. But it also was a reminder, um, or at least when that happened, I did vow to myself that no one ever should go through what I went through that week. Not only that, on the flip side, I realized that I was also anxious and depressed, you know, as well from the inside, but I was suffering in silence. I did everything, right, including opening that brick and mortar, doing everything, you know, up into getting the corporate job, you know, all of the things was just really trying to fulfill the void um, and fulfilling everyone else's expectation, but my own. 
Um, and perhaps that's why I got burnt out, like for all around, you know, I was burnt out emotionally. I was burnt out physically. I was not taking care of myself. Um, so I was forced to take a big step back. And, um, honestly, that's how I fell into coaching. Um, and that's how I started Fit to Profit was that intention of, you know, really taking care of myself, um, and really learning that I can do things differently. Um, and that, that, and that's okay. Um, for the first time, I really truly accepted that, you know, every obstacle is an opportunity and no matter what happens, I can overcome it. Um, and, uh, yes. Yeah, so fit to profit was born from my love for, uh, living a optimal life with health and wellness, everything all around and business. So, um, yeah, that's what I get to teach today is uh, mindset training for women entrepreneurs, how to remove all the mental barriers um, so that you can be successful from the inside out. Yeah. Okay. So first, I love the inside out. I think that's like you said, so many times we, I, I think, especially as women, we don't pay attention to the inside, um, you know, what's really happening to us. Um, so many women do go through a lot in a depression. And I've heard the restaurant business is one of the hardest ones to do. So <laughs> kudos to you for working in that direction. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about the mindset as far as the mindset of an entrepreneur? There's so many different things that we need to change in our head. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I definitely would want to truly start with always bringing it back to the initial thought of why you wanted to start business in the first place. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, cause mine was to save lives truly. Right. Like first of all, my own life. <laughs> right. And then the lives of others who, for example, um, I just have that thought of, oh my gosh, like no one ever should go through, um, what my friend went through and should ever consider, should never consider that option. Um, so that's my why, right? So that's the biggest reason for, I think for myself in days where things are not working out. Um, I always bring it back to the reason why I started my business in the first place. And ultimately what was my calling? Like, what was, what did I want? Why did I want to start my business in the first place? Um, cause honestly I've come across so many entrepreneurs and working with so many clients. It's not the money. Like it's definitely, it's the ultimate goal for me, money and freedom and et cetera. But without the why from, from again, from the inside, um, I think that's why most entrepreneurs get lost and get so far from, um, the, the vision is without with forgetting their why. Right. And then, um, ultimately the second biggest piece too, which is, goes along with um, the theme here is really prioritizing yourself as the CEO of your business. Nothing else is going to work. The business is not going to thrive. The business is not going to grow unless we are taking care of ourselves. Even let's consider a di different situation. Let's say if you were just an employee working for a company, if you were sick, you can't perform the job. So it's the same thing over here as an entrepreneur. When you're sick, you can't work. And when you can't work there, your business is closed for that day, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to prioritize ourselves. And it, it really requires, I really truly believe someone early on uh, when I first started my business told me that business is not just business. Business is like self-development on steroids. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understood the words, but I didn't really experience it until, of course, you know, my, my restaurant time and then having to start from scratch again with launching my virtual business and coaching business now, et cetera. It's really is self-development. I have to overcome my quote unquote failure of building my own American dream with the restaurants and then having to restart. And with that being new, even honestly, right now, after so many years coaching and having my business, I'm actually launching a new program that I'm working on also feels like, oh my gosh, am I starting from scratch? Yeah, in a way, right? So it takes that level of next the mindset of like, okay, you're still growing. You're still doing whatever is required. So it requires me to take care of myself on all levels, holistically, as you have heard so far, to continue to do the work. 
So I think it's connection to your why is the first and most important thing. Secondly, is prioritizing yourself and not losing yourself in the process is super important. And then last but not least, I want to say the third piece is always um, thinking about that you're actually in contribution, right? Because it's not and, and how we're all in community, we're all connected in that we we can't not grow or be successful by ourselves. And I think that's another thing that entrepreneurs, especially solopreneurs, especially when we're now in the virtual space, we're like, I'm by myself with my plants and my, you know, <laughs> my, my uh, fountain over here. But it's like we truly need community and um, really knowing that we're all connected and we're in it together. I think those are the three biggest pieces that I you know, want to call out and remind entrepreneurs or whoever is listening to um, happen to be like the biggest, like the, the most important uh, elements. So you have any tips on where to find that community? Because we are, as solopreneurs, we're sitting there by ourselves and with our plants, which I am, I am perfectly happy with my plants. <laughs> I love my plants. <laughs> but where do you, where would you suggest finding that community? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, like, let's say if you don't, you have no idea, right? Like, I know I started things differently, but it's literally talk, like, look at your pocketbook or your phone, right? Like, who do you know that is an entrepreneur? at least one person or at least your neighbor's friend or like somebody that may know of an entrepreneur, perhaps it, it takes making that connection. But honestly, Lois, I mean, we are in the information age, right? Go to google.com, look up networking events. Honestly, that's how I started my business. It's literally, I was actually not even living in Columbus, Ohio yet at the time, but I knew I wanted to start my business. And by the time we're moved, we would the business would have started. The idea came on in May and I knew I was moving to Columbus in August. Literally when the week that we were there looking for apartments, I also went networking that week. <laughs> you know, just look up local networking events and you just show up and start talking about your thing. That is honestly how I discovered this whole space of connection and building relationships. Um, if you want to build a business, like, you know, later on, I learned that the difference between a contact and a contract is an R in it, which is relationships. <laughs> well, that's good. I like that. I'm going to put a sign up that says that. <laughs> yeah, it's relationship, right? Like, and it's not the what, the how, but it's the who, like, who is it? Who is it that you need to be connected with? So honestly, look it up. I, I really truly believe is if you want the answer, if you seek the answer, it's there. Um, to to that's it's it's so easy to find. Like I mean, these days, like you just look it up, right? Networking event. Um, and there's also uh, meetup.com. Like even like you can just literally Google how to meet other entrepreneurs or how to find a community as an entrepreneur, you will get like a thousand things, you know, that, that you can belong to, but ultimately start with start small. I mean, it's literally could just like, like I said, talking to a friend who have an entrepreneur idea or like someone, you know, that's already an entrepreneur, they're going to point, point you to the right direction, but that's how you can build, you know, community. That's where I would go. Yeah. You know, it's funny how you say it. it's like, it's, like could be like just one person. And when we moved to North Carolina, that one person actually became our insurance man. <laughs> and he's like been introducing us to all kinds of people and businesses and things of that nature. So yeah, it can be just simply a single person, especially when you're moving to a new area and you have to start. Absolutely. It's a who, right? Like we're so, that's why it goes back to my third point, how it's so important to find that community is because we're all connected somehow, right? Like we, we need each other. And um, yeah, it's, it's like you said, in your experience, it's just knowing one person. And now, you know, you know, whoever that it's in the community that you can use for different things. What do you think is something, let's say just like a big focus point on building a successful business? Okay. So besides the three things that I've said so far, within the three things, it takes one thing that could make the three things happen, <laughs> right? Like this, the sub point to the, the three most important elements. I want to say 
that it's important to build discipline. And I say build intentionally, right? I didn't wake up one day and say, I'm going to get up at five o'clock now in the morning, every single morning. And it happens. No, it honestly took me, I want to say at least two, three years intentionally transitioning myself into it to now, you know, being able to get up be between 4.30 and five o'clock every morning. That didn't happen overnight. That did not happen overnight. But I had to start building discipline, doing it little by little. A really great book is I would recommend it's Atomic Habits. Like you just have to start little, right? It's not about, honestly, when you first start, it's never about quality. Throw quality out the window because we always hear the opposite. It's quality over quantity, quality over quantity. When you first start building a discipline, it's quantity. It's how frequent, how often can you do the thing? And it literally could be one minute, just like my, my, my meditation practice. I could, as you can probably guess, like I'm probably already type A, right? To you, I'm like excited, <laughs> I'm very energetic. Like I cannot sit still. And if you, what, for the longest time, when I hear the word meditation, I'm like, what, you want me to be a robot? Like you can't turn me off. Like I'm a human. But anyhow, I entertain the idea and I literally timed myself. It was two minutes. And I was fidgety. Let's just be honest here. And it wasn't in the morning. It was just setting an intention first of like just two minutes per day, find a time, doesn't matter where it is. So I want to share all of that just to let people know that it doesn't have to look a certain way. It has to work for you. So when I first started, it was like, okay, set an intention. You're going to meditate two minutes per day. It doesn't matter where, it doesn't matter when. Literally, I found myself doing it in between my meetings and literally in the car. When I realized, okay, I just got done with this meeting because remember I was networking a lot. I was going from one event to the next and I found myself literally sitting in the car. Who am I, which event am I going to? And then I said, okay, let's ground down to that meeting. And I literally found myself, I was meditating or sitting still, just breathing for two minutes. It was and it was the most effective meditation. And now that's this also what I teach, right? For my clients too, is to make sure that you have transition times in between all of your events. It doesn't matter if it's virtual. I know you're not moving from one room to the next room, but it's just like wrap the conversation, set the intention that's done, moving on to the next conversation and think about the next person because otherwise you'd be talking to someone, you don't even know what the person's name is. Okay, oh, is her name Lois? You know, like, who am I talking to? Like, you have to take the time to transition. And that's how, honestly, how I started my meditation practice. And now I can sit 15 minutes, 20 minutes, even 30 minutes if I want to in the morning. But it wasn't like that initially. It was just setting an intention and really starting small. Same thing. I was a sprinter when I was in high school. I was on a, a track runner. Long, running long distance is so opposite from what how I was wired. Right. Like when I was training for my very first 10 K, we were training my husband, my boyfriend at the time, my husband now, but we were training day and night. It's like now to reflect, it was kind of funny. We were so disciplined on our training <laughs> just to read a 10 K. Maybe yes, for some of us, 10 K is a lot, which is six point, you know, 6.2 miles, but it was really small increments. I just run a little longer the next day. I just literally was like a quarter of a mile longer each time. And that's training. So I want to say build confidence and discipline the same way. And what's really interesting is you can't just work and say that I'm going to build my confidence. Confidence comes with discipline <laughs> and taking action and being consistent with that. So um, yeah, I would say that's another really important element and I would say like it's the non-negotiable if you want to be successful as an entrepreneur discipline you cannot and like look look up what are the things that most successful people do like you will see that every one of single person have a routine of some sort they have a system of how they do things sleep jobs you see him looks like he wears the same thing every single time well because he doesn't he doesn't want to waste energy on selecting what he has to wear he has jeans and black t-shirt or black button downs in his closet and that's all he has how disciplined is that right so we get to be disciplined too 
right? To, to be successful. So it depends on where you start, but I would say that's one biggest thing. All right. So talk to me about, so you have young children. So how are you creating balanced life between work and family and children and all the things you would like to do? I love it. I love that you asked that question because you guess what? I did definitely have been or, you know, learn to be disciplined so much more disciplined as a mompreneur now because I found myself rushing, being scattered. And also most of the time, most of the days feeling really guilty at night because I'm with them and I'm on the phone or I'm like, I'm never present 100%. So I had to learn to be super disciplined with my schedule. So that's why I developed the habit of getting up earlier, 4.30, between 4.30 and 5. Why? They're still sleeping. That's when I can do my morning routine, right? So you see, discipline goes into that. But if you have the discipline, now you can organize your schedule and you stick with your schedule. And honestly, that. I cannot operate without my calendar, my electronic calendar. I have it on the go. I have it on my laptop. And that's honestly how I communicate with my husband because he travels 80% of the time. Discipline. I literally put an event on the calendar. I invite him to it. He accepts it. I know he got it. Like that's a system that we have, right? <laughs> it's crazy to that point, but that's how things can work, you know, is, is creating that discipline. And honestly, it's, it's really keeping my word um, to what I say that I will do. And you will see that my priorities or non-negotiables are the same every single day. It, it, I don't deviate from it, which is faith, fitness, family fulfillment. So notice in those exact order, devotionals in the morning, I work out in the morning, I take care of the kids, drop them off at school, then fulfillment, which is the fourth thing, which is work. I'm not gonna work before I do all the other three things. So, I mean, that's how, that's how I stay organized. That's how I'd say discipline. Um, that's how I manage and balance. And, and with my calendar too, then I can literally see, oh my gosh, like every single day, my daughter does, uh, does jujitsu, which is martial arts. Mm -hmm. She needs to be at this thing at five o'clock. That means I need to stop working at 4.30 and my schedule is blocked after 4.30. So is being that organized and disciplined with your schedule is is how I balance things. I love your four Fs because we actually, the Giant Builders has four pillars. So it's spiritual, health, family, and business. And again, in that order. So it's really coincides with what you do. Tell me about your book. Yes. So uh, I alluded to the word overcomer, right? Overcoming things. So this is overcomer. Conquer your fear to achieve your goals. This is ultimately, I want to say more like a memoir, but more of the documentation of how everything started, um, how I overcame, honestly, all of the fears to start my business and overcoming fear while running the business. You know, when it comes to starting a new strategy or hiring a new employee, whatever it may be, it's really tr ultimately about overcoming your fear, right? And that what the book is about. It's just a compilation of my stories and how I started some uh, interviews that I have done with other entrepreneurs and just really retelling the story as is like there's no fluff in it um, uh, has many personal stories as well, too, of why I choose this route, right, of being a coach and speaking and sharing my experiences. And um, so, yeah, you'll you'll have uh, trials and errors and and also victories uh, as well too in, in this book and really showing you that um, it gets to be you know enjoyable and we get to embrace the experience that's wonderful yeah. right any closing thoughts I definitely want to call um, and it first and foremost acknowledge you for mm -hmm. listening right? Like for, for acknowledge you for creating this space, creating this, this space for everyone. And also for listening to my story and allowing myself to share. And then for the listeners too, if you are listening to this podcast episode to acknowledge yourself for having that growth mindset, right? Like for doing something to get yourself moving forward, right? And the reminder to that is listening to information and knowledge is knowledge, but it doesn't become wisdom or doesn't become success or results without action. 
So I would say, take one thing from this conversation today with Lois and I, one thing, one little thing. It could be meditating for like one minute, set a timer. It could be, oh my gosh, maybe I should consider my four Fs. What are my priorities? Or it could be, oh my gosh, like, what am I afraid of anything right now? Like, how should I look about that uh, uh, upon that situation right now? So I want to invite you to my last word is that take action, do something, do something with the knowledge that you've gained from this conversation and keep moving forward and do not give up. Just keep going. That's great. All right. Well, Giant Boulders, one thing before we close up. So I'm going to give away one of Didi's books. So if you leave a comment in one of our social media posts or our YouTube channel, I'll do a drawing and give away one of her books. So Didi, thank you so much. I just appreciate you sharing in your wisdom and just your life experience. I mean, God has blessed you with so many challenges to just build up to where you are. And so, so happy for you. Absolutely. Thank you again so much again for having me and yeah, from, from, for all that you do. Oh, thank you. All right, Jane Beals. See you next week. Thank you for listening. This has been The Giant Builders with Lois Wyant.